Good evening and welcome to the benefits of Canterbury, St Dunstan, St Mildred and St Peter where you join us for our sixth reflect Advent reflection on the day's gospel. Tonight's reflection is by Alicia Penton. Thank you Alicia. Good evening. The reflection today is taken from Luke chapter 5, verse 17. One day, as he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law, who had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem, were sitting there. And the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Some man came carrying a paralytic on a mat, and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the room and the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up. Take your mat and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, We have seen remarkable things today. Many years ago, on BBC Radio 4, Thought for the Day, I heard Rabbi Lionel Blue tell this story. Two men found themselves midweek in an empty church on their knees in prayer. After a while, one said to the other, What are you praying for? The other answered, I desperately need ten pounds to feed my family. Oh, said the other, I, my need is far greater than that. I need ten thousand pounds. With that, he reached into his pocket, bought out a ten-pound note, and saying, what's ten pounds more when I need so much? He pressed it into the man's hand, who went off rejoicing at the kindness which would solve his problems. After he had left the church, the first man got down on his knees again, and looking up to the heavens, he said, Now, Lord, that I have your undivided attention. From time to time, we have all had difficulties to face, but we must remember that Jesus said, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Or Jesus told us, and it is recorded in Matthew 7, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. It is amazing how often our prayers are answered, and we are able to give thanks to God for the way certain prayers have been heard and a response has come, even if it happens in a different way than we had ever imagined. Likewise, there are occasions when we ask for help for friends, who are going through a bad time. While Jesus was ministering to the crowds who surrounded him, people came up to him to ask to be cured or for a friend or relative to be healed. They knew Jesus would help them, even if they only touched the hem of his garment. In today's reading, the paralyzed man was brought to Jesus on a stretcher, but there were too many people in the house for them to get in. I bet it was the last thing the owner of the house wanted, that they would make a hole in his roof. But they knew that Jesus, however many struggled to see him, he 
he would always help them most readily, even the scribes and Pharisees who asked so rudely what right he had to forgive sins. But they must have been amazed to see this paralyzed man get up and carry his bed as he walked away. Thank you, Alicia. What a wonderful reminder of that interlocutor, Lionel Bloom, Rabbi Lionel Bloom, interlocutor for the God of Abraham. Uh, how much we owed him while he was alive. And thank you for the story. And as we have God's undivided attention this evening, here is the collect, the Advent collect. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility on the last day, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And drawing all our prayers together, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you again, Alicia, for your inspiring reflection. There will be another reflection tomorrow evening, broadcast live at six o'clock and then available on Facebook. Bye for now. <laughs>